please stand by for the upgrade to the absolutely completely random podcast. Now downloading. 1%. Estimated time to completion. 87 hours, 55 minutes, 45 seconds. This is going to take a while. Hi everybody and welcome to the absolutely completely random podcast for... Friday, November 9th, 2018. Yes, I'm recording the podcast on Friday again because, yes, I have to go to work on Saturday. And, yes, I'm going to be tired um, until I get upstairs and I go to my room and I call it a night. I'm liable to zonk out on my bed again like last week. I don't even remember how Backtracks USA ended. I remember that the other guy was in charge, but I don't remember how it ended. That's kind of sad. But anyway, that's my personal hell. Uh, <laughs> not yours. But anyway, what do I have in store for you this week? Well, I've been told I should have less topics and more discussion. And well, this week pretty much is giving me that without a doubt because there is not many topics this week. But I did manage to scrape some from the barrel of the great world around us. Including Square Enix canceling the Final Fantasy 15 episodes as the director has quit the company. Yeah, that's right. The DLC is canceled for Final Fantasy 15. Uh, ouch. Uh, that's uh, gonna hurt. I mean, bad. Robotics Notes Dash Games opening video is highlighting the main characters. First off, I'm impressed that it's getting a game. Second off, it's getting a game. And third... There's a game based on this anime series? Holy hell, this was a great thing! I can't wait to talk about that. Eh, let's see, what else do we got here? All over something else. Oh, yes! <laughs> Just in case you thought I was crazy or not. No, I have another topic. Um, and believe it or not, it's a Gridman topic. Because SSS.Gridman has posted guidelines for fan works and announces a hug pillow cover and parka. Yes, that's right, because this is a series that, despite everything, so many fans are loving it for. I'm hoping the right reasons. I mean, the plot is good, damn it. We're five episodes into that. And last but not least, Disney's new streaming service is set to launch late next year, and their name is... Well, they really didn't put much thought into it. I can't wait to talk about that. I'm going to leave you on a cliffhanger for now. All that and more this week on the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. But before we get into that, you know the song and dance by now. If you've been here before, if not, this is the part where I do some selfless, uh, shameless promotional stuff here. Think like Spaceballs, the animated series, but uh, I'm just not saying Spaceballs every five minutes. <laughs> uh, if you're in the market for oddities, weird stuff, collectibles, what have you, check out my eBay page. A-R-H-O-A-D-S hyphen 2012 on eBay. I got a wide variety of crap up for sale, including but not limited to movies, some DVDs, uh, trading cards, some weirdities, oddities, some toys every now and then. Just a lot of weird stuff. I am getting into like some uh, computer parts, things like that. I will be getting them up. I got a whole crap ton of Magic the Gathering cards that... Keep getting pushed back from my list for some unknown reason. I think it's mostly the fact that I got like over, I think it's, I think the last time I counted was just a little over a thousand cards. So that's taking a long time to catalog those little bastards. And believe me, I got plenty of notebooks to catalog, to catalog all those. But holy crap, I mean, it's just taking a hell of a long time to catalog those. God knows I'm trying. Uh, I am trying, because I'm going to catalog them first, and then put them into a, another program so I can keep track of everything. That's what I should have been doing from the start. But anyway, a uh, wide variety of stuff, wide variety of other things. If you're interested, check it out. It's still even good just for shits and giggles, uh, gifts for the holidays that are coming up, because, hey, you know, people like getting fun gifts, especially those weird relatives that come around at Christmas and the holidays. You know, like Weird Uncle Ted or Strange Aunt June. Yes, you know, the weird ones that just come around and say hi all the time. They only come around once a year because it's convenient and because there's free food. You know, those relatives. Yeah. Anyway, uh, if you're in the market for that stuff, check out my eBay page. Once again, that's A-R-H-O-A-D-S hyphen 2012. You can check the link in the description to take you right there. I've been putting it in almost every week. If I forget, 
just check one of the past podcast episodes. It's down there. I am getting forgetful. Hell, I'm almost 30, and I'm getting forgetful. <laughs> uh, you can also follow me on Facebook, on the official Web Designer 18 Facebook page. And don't forget to check out my official Twitter page. Yes, it's my Twitter page, actually, not one for the channel. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Otaku Roads, where I actually spend the majority of my time if I'm not in the virtual world. I don't know why. It's just more fun there. All right, so uh, this is the part where I kind of bring everybody up to speed with what's happened during the week, at least uh, for me. So we all, you know, bond a little closer to one another. I, I kind of feel like you're all part of my uh, enlarged family, only you don't come bugging me for money. And you at least care about my opinions and my thoughts. Uh, so, yeah, uh, last Saturday I had to work because I recorded the podcast on a Friday. And then I got invited to an appreciation dinner where... I was actually asked to make a video. It was for my local fire department. Uh, it was just like celebrating their uh, last whole year. Uh, it was mostly pictures and some music. And honestly, if the person, and I believe it was the assistant chief, and I know my mom's going to uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this, because uh, I, I know she's going to correct me if I'm wrong because my uncle's the chief. I believe the one that asked me was the assistant chief, but I know she's... She'll correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. I know she will. But uh, he asked me back in, I think it was August, I want to say, uh, if I could work on this video. And I got the stuff, I want to say, near the end of October because he is getting forgetful in his old age, plus with everything that's going on with him. So uh, I did the video. I, I honestly thought it was pretty good, but as I'm sitting there watching it with everybody else, I'm thinking to myself, just feeling the room... It's like, oh, God, they hate this thing. And I'm like, oh, God, they hate it. Uh, I'm just, like, banging my head against the wall, like, oh, my God, they hate it, they hate it, they hate it, they hate it, they hate it. And I'm like, oh, God, this is going to be bad. They were clapping like crazy at the end of it, and I don't even know if that was just because it was over or because they really liked it. But I got some kudos uh, and some, yeah, that was a really good job he did. Um, as I'm going out the door following behind my mom and grandfather, not really, not realizing that my mom had a key to get into the house. Uh, I didn't know she had her key or not, so I'm like, I better catch up to them because I have the key. So I was kind of like quickly going through a couple people, you know, congratulating me. One guy was our local plumber, and I was kind of, I really apologize. I should have apologized to him uh, for rushing out, but I was had, wanted to catch up to my mom and grandfather. But it was an interesting night. Uh, some good food. Okay, some of the deli stuff was good. The chicken was a little dry, but yeah, it was an all right dinner. I hadn't gone to one in years for there. Uh, then the following Sunday morning, uh, this is fun. I wake up, and I go out for the newspaper, and all of a sudden I'm hearing this like uh, strange noise. and it, sounded, it was crackling in the air. Something was crackling in the air. And for life of me, I had no idea what in the hell this was. I'm thinking, okay, maybe there's a light or something that's shorting out, and I just, you know, I'm hearing it. And then I'm looking up, there's an electric pole uh, over by the fire company, and it's between the fire company and another building. And I'm looking, and I'm like, yeah, that's where the noise is coming from. And I'm taking a really good list, and I look up, and I'm seeing this little spark. Just literally sparking and arcing a bit on the power line, and I'm like, ooh, that's not good. I mean, it burned, it burned the pole. Uh, after they, after the electric company came out and fixed it, they burned it burned the pole. Uh, so I've been calling my uncle because I'm like, um, I don't know if this qualifies as I need to call 911 or if hey, I just need to call uh, the electric company because I'm not exactly sure what this qualifies as. Nor mostly I wanted to qualify: is this an actual emergency or is this something that hey, we just got to notify them, they just got to shut the power off to this one part. Uh, so he come, he calls me back, and he's like, okay, what exactly is it doing? And I explain it. He goes, I'll be up in 10 minutes. And I'm standing there. At this point, the birds started to chirp, and there's a little more noise. And I'm like, oh, great. Now you're not doing it anymore. I'm like, you son of a bitch. I'm looking up at it. And I'm like, no, it's still doing it. Just very, very, very faintly. So then he comes up, and he goes, okay, where is it? And I said, it's this little curly thing. That's up there. He goes, okay, let's work up the pole. And along the pole, there's a, like a guide pole that kind of keeps it from moving around and stuff and where the extra wires are coming out because it goes underground. 
And I go, it's above that. He goes, oh, okay. He found it, and he's walking up a bit. He goes, yep, Houston, we got a problem. And I'm asking him what it was. He explained it to me. And I'm like, holy crap. So we had to call uh, the electric company, which was fun. Because they're open on a Sunday, apparently, but not until 9 in the morning. And we're trying to call them. It's like 6.30-ish. Like 6.30 going on 7 in the morning. We're trying to call them. It's like, yeah, that's fun. Uh, got a hold of them. Did get, you know, we did finally get a hold of them. And they sent somebody out. They're working on it. And I thought it'd be nice when the guy showed up. And I'm like, yeah, I'm the one that called it in. And he just kind of looks at me and goes, yeah, you got a blown fuse box up there. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, we kind of figured something was broken. And we figured it was a fuse because of what it was. And it's like, okay. I just go I just go about the rest of my morning. I'm like, all right. I'm like, do you want to be an insensitive jerk? Sorry I dragged you out of your nice, warm, cozy bed at you know, like 8 in the morning on a Sunday. You know, bite me. In the back of my mind, I'm saying. Uh, so that was Sunday. It, it got fixed, and it did leave a mark on the pole where it burned it, and it did it, it did a good job. Oh, uh, see, that was... Yeah, that was Monday. And that was Sunday. Monday was uneventful. Tuesday was uneventful. Wednesday, I watched uh, The Art of Getting By. That wasn't a bad movie, but it wasn't a good movie. Uh, Freddie Highmore and uh, Emma Roberts. If you get a chance to watch it, I say watch it online. Uh, I got the DVD cheap. I bought it at the Dollar Tree for a buck, so there was that. Um, yesterday, nothing else exciting really happened, and I ended up getting the day off today because we didn't get enough work for me to act, for me to have to go in, so they told me I could take today off. But I still have to go in tomorrow, which is why I'm recording tonight, and now we're all caught up. Oh, I did get my uh, replacement tablet. Uh, I actually requested my post office to hold it last Saturday for me so I could go pick it up uh, so it wouldn't be till like 4 o'clock in the afternoon when I get it. And It was like almost 4.30 till the mail came by, which I'm like, yeah, it was a good idea. I asked him to hold it. And the lady at the post office is like, well, why did you ask us to hold this? You know, like, you kind of know, you know it'll be there today. I'm like, yeah, I just kind of lied to her a little bit. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be home this afternoon, and I... Don't really want the neighbors to go snooping around. I, mean, I know my neighbors. I know the one wouldn't do anything, and the bunch of people that live next door wouldn't do squat either. They, they're they terrified of me, so there's, apparently I'm terrifying to them. So I know they wouldn't do anything. I'm like, if somebody comes around and swipes out like some bills or that, be my guest. You can go pay them. Uh, otherwise, it's like, yeah, I kind of want this. So I spent most of the day fixing that up. Um, we watched... Uh, the Code, it was a Morgan Freeman and Antonio Banderas movie. It wasn't bad, wasn't good either, but it wasn't bad. Then we watched Chill Factor on Sunday, which, meh, it was an alright movie. Uh, but I got my apps up, all except for one. Uh, I got Constant Champions up, I got Puzzles and Dragons, which was an epic adventure in itself, and I got uh, most of my other ones, including my Webtoons app. The only app I couldn't get to come back was SAOIF because it is not compatible yet with uh, Android 6.0 Marshmallow, which is what my new tablet has. And here's the kicker. I'm thinking about this the whole week, and I'm like, you know, I should probably look around and find another tablet. That way, in case this whole entire thing happens again, I'm not out a couple days. On a, looking for a tablet. The one I got now, it's a Insignia Flex. It's a 10.1 inch. It's nice, but the I don't think you have a full gig of RAM. A lot of people are saying you don't. It's a 32 gigabyte uh, storage capacity. I like it. It works. But my games have a severe lag, and you can feel it, like when I'm playing Contest of Champions and Puzzles and Dragons. But it gets the job done. I just really have to move as quickly as I can. I just have to take it back a notch, thinking, okay, it can't compete with me. But all in all, it's not bad. Uh, but Puzzles and Dragons, I had to submit my uh, a whole bunch of information to get my account back, because I never, I swear to God, I thought I linked it to my Google, but I never did, apparently. So I had to submit my user ID, um, my five monsters that I use all the time, or five that are in my favorites list, which I have a lot favorited. 
So I just picked my main team, which I actually had down from left to right in the exact order they are because I see them all the time. Uh, the last dungeon that I beat, my rank, and everything else. I even told them who my best friend in the game was. So, it's like, look, I can tell you everything about my account other than what my secret code is because I never wrote it down, which I did now, and I have it stored in a very secure place. Not to mention it's secured in two different places. One in a very, very, very tightly secured box uh, where it's written down just in case I were to lose access to where the second one is. So, it is safely secured. And on top of that, I linked it to Google. I linked it to my Facebook. I am not losing my account again. I got it back, uh, I want to say Wednesday night. I got it back. I was ecstatic. It's all there. All my monsters, all my creatures. I used up the 100 magic stones that they gave us for the uh, neat little egg pool thing that they have, which I was planning to do anyway before all the crap happened with my old tablet. So either way, I am happy that my tablet issue is now resolved. Although, I, like I said, I am looking into getting a second tablet, and I'm going to make my 10.1 the replacement one. The question is, I'm just debating what I want to get. I mean, I like the Insignia brand. I've been used to it for now, but I found a strange one. It's called Dragon Touch, but I can't find enough information to know if it's worth getting or not. So if anybody out there, I've already now, Cap, I know I already asked on Twitter. You already said you don't know. That's fine. My one friend doesn't know, and he does a lot of computer and, you know, tech-related stuff. Uh, he doesn't know either. But if anybody out there uh, has ever heard of Dragon Touch, uh, let me know if their tablets are any good. I mean, seriously, because they got an 8-inch, 32-gig tablet that I found on eBay. It's really interesting to me. Because uh, it's the right screen size, right storage size. I'm interested in it. Let me know if their tablets are any good. Because uh, let me know if it's a good brand or not. Because it looks good, but I don't have enough information. But that's how my week went. I know this has gone long, but I don't have that many topics. So that's how my week's gone. So let's jump into the podcast. Let's get this started. Because i got to get to sleep. Because i got to get up at 2.30. i got to go to work tomorrow. Yay! Alright, so let's uh, get into this. So, Final Fantasy XV, which, first off, I'm amazed this is still going. I mean, I know that Final Fantasy is one of the greatest games ever to come out of the gaming era. Uh, Final Fantasy VII is one of the best. Final Fantasy VI uh, was a second-place contender, but uh, number one in a lot of fans' hearts. I personally liked Final Fantasy VII, though I never played it. I watched Advent Children. Uh and I played with some of the characters from when I was doing the Kingdom Hearts game. So I do know the story. I do know the construct of it. So there is good. But uh, Square Enix has sadly announced that the DLC for Final Fantasy XV, almost all of the DLC, by the way, has been canceled. And game director Hajime Tabata has left the company altogether. So, uh, Square Enix hosted a live stream on Thursday. Or I'm guessing, was this been Thursday or Wednesday? I think it's Thursday. So, it's been Thursday, because it was the 8th. Today's the 9th. Uh, they hosted a live stream, and it was billed as a special program with exciting news about upcoming Final Fantasy XV content. Uh, but an incredible plot twist! Worthy of M. Night Shyamalan Wang Wong! Uh, himself! Uh, the news turned out to be inconceivably terrible. So they plan to continue the never-ending flow of Final Fantasy XV content through 2019 with four DLC episodes centered on characters uh, Adrian, Arcarina, and I know I'm mispronouncing those, uh, you know, I'm sorry, uh, Luna Frey and Notix, or Noctix. Uh, instead, only the Adrian episode will be released the other three have been abandoned. Uh, there'll be a collaboration event with Final Fantasy uh, 14 next month. I had to actually double check the Roman, the Roman numerals there. And the Comrades multiplayer mode will also be spun out into a standalone game for the PS4 and Xbox One. So, what does all this exactly mean? Well, first off, it's not uncommon, especially nowadays, 
for DLC to suddenly dry up and go away. You're either going to have it because either the money's gone, the licensing agreement's done, or they just want to move on to something else. For this case, it could be Square Enix's way of saying, look, we're enjoying this, but we have something new we want to come out with down the road. And we need to get rid of this. We need to stop doing this early so that we can shift all of our people onto that. And that's something that would often come to mind. You're thinking, okay, so it's something interesting that you could possibly have versus, huh, why did it suddenly get canned out of thin blue air when they planned to continue it? Uh, so Final Fantasy XV changed the series forever, and it's not done yet. Uh, Tabata's departure is particularly surprising, though, because he re uh, he recently set up and took control of a new studio within Square Enix, uh, Luminos Productions. Final Fantasy XV went through a famously troubled and protracted development, and Tabata is largely credited with turning the project around after taking over. Uh, he took over the directional role from Tetsuya... Nomura in 2014, and the game was a critical and commercial success and has continued to be updated with new features, contents, and versions. So like I said, again, why would you stop this then, unless you're secretly planning something new and you realize, hey, we got to get everybody in on this, and we need to shift everybody over to that, which could be the thing. Uh, but we have a thing here from uh, Tabata who said on the stream, In regards to my next endeavors and near future, I have a project that I truly wish to solidify as my next challenge after Final Fantasy XV. For that reason, I have decided to leave my current position and start my own business. In order to achieve my goal, as production of episode Adrian continues and Luminous Productions works on new projects, I felt that it was time for me to hand over the torch to the next generation group of talented and trustworthy colleagues and believe that they will create something amazing. So, you basically just handed off everything to a whole bunch of kids hoping that they're not going to screw it up. Okay! <laughs> you have faith in the young there! I don't know if that's uh, misguided faith, blind faith, or dumb luck, but you got something. Uh, so yeah, so he wants to move on to other things. That's fine. Everybody's for that. But the fact that uh, three entire episodes were scrapped, a multiplayer... Uh, what was it? Okay, the Comrades multiplayer mode is going to be spun out into a standalone game for two different systems. Uh, you got a collaboration event with the previous game. So, yeah, okay. You abandoned three entire episodes, which, unless they were pivotal to this, I could see a lot of fans getting upset. But, like I said, I'm really gonna... I, I really hate to say it this way, too, but I'm amazed that Final Fantasy is still a thing. I mean, I know it's a thing, but I have not heard a single person talk about this in months slash years. So I'm amazed it's still uh, out there. I really am. But, like I said, in this day and age, with new content coming via downloads and DLC packs, it's not surprising to suddenly see something get canned. Uh, with a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, you could have... You could create an entirely new game... And all of a sudden, it's like, hey, we got a new DLC that's going to be coming out next month. Something happens, like you lose the license to something in it. Or there's a character in it you can't have. Or something just screws up and it causes a massive glitch in testing. And you have to yank the download. You have to yank the DLC. So it's not an uncommon thing if that would be the case. And, and I'll honestly, like I said, if that's the case, I don't see anybody literally throwing a fit about it, there's nothing they can do. I mean, you have a choice between, hey, you know, I can't make the game, and oh, hey, the game's done. Uh, there's a choice between this, and truthfully, I mean, they're coming out with one more episode. Like I said, this makes me think that they might be coming out with something totally new down the road, 
utilizing these characters and they just wanted to shift everybody over to that. You don't know until more words come out. But uh, Tabata leaving, though, and basically the director of this leaving, just, uh, that's a massive blow. I don't care who you are. That, that's a massive blow there. So with him basically gone, you're left wondering, well, that's cool and all, but what's now going to happen with the, you know, the games and everything else? What we now know, you know, at least for Final Fantasy, you know, at least for Final Fantasy 15, we know what's going to happen. So it's sad. I'm not going to deny that. It is sad. It's a bit upsetting. But it's not uncommon. I mean, you're going to have stuff like this. No gaming company and no game that's ever going to come out is going to be airtight and perfect. You're always going to have that one that's going to kind of give this weird little vibe. And it could all eventually come down and stop. It just depends on A, who the person is that's doing it. B, who's you know like in charge of it. And C, if they're actually going to go through with any of the extra content. So like I said, you could have also had money could have uh, dried up. There's an entirely amount of factors that could have led to this. It's just a matter of, are we ever going to find out what those factors were? Probably not. And that's honestly just, we're just going to have to live with that. I mean, we're never going to find out what exactly was that caused this. But at the same time, do we really want to know? You know, it's sort of a double-edged sword there. I mean, we want to know, but yet we don't want to know. And this we're just going to leave it. But anyway, uh, for you fans that are looking forward to Final Fantasy XV for four more episodes, uh, you get one. Uh, it's sort of like uh, uh, that game from Atari way back in the day that uh, the Angry Video Game Nerd did, a Sword Quest game. They were going to have four games for it. Uh, Fire World, Earth World, World Quest. Yeah, it was like World Quest, I think it was, or something like that. Uh, you had Fire World. Earth World, Water World, and Air World. Fire World, Earth World, and Water World were the only three that were ever released. They had a contest with each one where you could win uh, prizes. And the big, you know, the final prize is going to be your chance to win a crap ton of money, a sword, and something else. But uh, the contest got yanked because of the video game crash. Kind of just ended the entire thing. And Airworld, the cartridge for the final game, never existed. It never got made. And that was back with cartridge-based games. So just imagine, like nowadays, like I said, with DLC content, where you could literally make an entire game and have it be nothing but episodes. Where you could just make one game where it's a menu and everything is downloadable episodes that you have to download each new episode to play, which... Kind of would be pretty cool, but also annoying. And all of a sudden, it's like, hey, you know, we've run out of money, and the story can't conclude with episode, let's say, five. Uh, let's say it's a five-episode game that you've been pitching, and you released episode three. The ratings are starting to go down. Nobody's playing the game. It's costing you a crap ton of money. Sponsors are pulling out and everything else. You're losing butt-ton and butt-ton and butt-ton of cash. You're just flying out the window. And all of a sudden, it's like, you know what? Screw it. We're done. Well, we still have episode four. Fine. Put it up. That'll be the last thing as we start shutting down the servers. That'll be it. They can download it. They can have it. And that's the end of it. And episode five just never gets made. So you never get a satisfying conclusion. Now, I don't know how these uh, four games are going to play out. If they were all going to be interlinked to one another. I don't know. I'm not even going to pretend like I do know. So there is that. So... It's a double-edged sword, like I said. We want to know why it was canceled, but at the same time, we don't want to know why it was canceled. Because if we know why it was canceled, it'll piss us off. But if we don't know why it was canceled, we're going to get mad either way. So there is that. But anyway, yep, so like I said, if you're looking forward to playing uh, Final Fantasy XV anymore for the uh, <coughs> four extra chapters, you get one. And then that's going to be it till they uh, come up with the multiplayer game. That's, uh, that's kind of sad, actually. Okay, so, way back a couple years ago, I came across this weird anime series called Robotics Notes. And it is, that's exactly how it's called, by the way, Robotics Notes. It is interesting, it is cool, the plot was all over the place, but in a fun way. Uh, it had a very touching story. 
gripping underlying plot. I remember watching this as I'm sitting at my desktop in the dining room. Uh, my grandmother and grandfather are watching TV in the living room. My mom's working on dinner. I'm literally watching this online. I loved it. It was great. Wonderful series. Highly, highly approve it. If anybody wants to watch it, I'm actually planning on doing a review on it at some point. I got to rewatch it again. But I, I would like to do a review on it. That's how much I love it. Well, turns out there's a Dash game. Uh, it's D. A-S-H games opening. It's highlighting the main characters. Well, I would hope it would. Uh, so the... <laughs> 5BP dot begins streaming an open video on Tuesday for Robotics Notes Dash. Uh, the sequel game to Mage's uh, Robotics Notes visual novel. The video highlights the game's main characters. Uh, the sequel story will center around the former members of the Robotics Club... After they have graduated from high school, uh, Steingate's character, Itaru Daru Ishida, is joining the cast. Uh, Zue is performing the game's opening song, Advent Story. The game's going to be launching next year on the PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch in Japan. Mages will also release the Robotic Notes Oku Set Collection, featuring both Robotics Notes Dash and Robotic Notes Elite for PS4 and Switch on January 31st. The original Robotics Notes PS3 and Xbox 360 visual novel, the third in Mages and 5BP Science Adventure series after Chaos Head and Steins Gate, uh, shipped in Japan in 2012. The PlayStation Vita port titled Robotic Notes Elite debuted in 2014 with new animated scenes. Spike Tunesoft is planning to release the game in the West. Robotics Notes Elite will get a Switch version on November 22nd. I'm assuming next year or this year. Because apparently, I got a Sonic thing wrong. I might as well throw this in here now. Um, when I'm listening, when I'm reading the stuff here for the podcast, I do get stuff, you know, thrown off from time to time. Plus, with my, my vision is not the world's greatest, and I do have a slight dyslexia where I can miscompose numbers and letters. Mostly just numbers. Uh, apparently the Sonic live-action Sonic movie is next year, not this year. I apologize for that. So like I'm saying, though, I'm assuming that this is the Switch version for this thing will be next year or this year. I don't know which. All it says literally in the article is November 22nd. That is all it says. I am not joking. That is all it says. November 22nd. That's it. Doesn't say this year. Doesn't say next year. So I'm assuming it's this year. I can't be sure, but I'm assuming. Uh, the game inspired a television anime in 2012. And Funimation released a series in North America. And I watched it dubbed. It is amazing! Seriously, it's actually quite good. So, getting a game version of this would be is interesting. I haven't played any of it. Sounds really cool. But what I would rather have is the game that they featured in the series. The game that brought... that was the main focus of this series. At least one underlying part of this series. And that is Kill Ballad. I would rather have a Kill Ballad game released for phones and tablets just to have some fun because it looks so cool. I'd rather have that. And like I said, I'm planning to do a review on this. I have to rewatch it again, so I have to set time aside to rewatch it. Uh, it's like 20 some episodes. It is long. It is worth it, but it is long. I have to, like I said, look it back up. I got to rewatch it again. Just to get my feet wet, take some notes, jot some stuff down. All before I can even plan to do a uh, reviewing of it. So, yes, it will be coming. Maybe for that new video series I was talking about in the channel update. Hint, hint. Maybe. Uh, but anyway, with this video game's opening highlights, I would hope that it highlights the main characters. That's what an opening does. Uh, you're not just going to create an opening that just kicks ass and doesn't highlight shit. Oh, yeah, this game had a stunning opening. The plot and the gameplay sucks. But that opening kicked ass. Yeah, 
they don't judge a game by its opening. They judge a game by its gameplay and by its graphics, its environment, the character designs, the plot. How it opens up the game? Oh, wow. That's... Wow, it's so beautiful, but the game sucks. Yes, but look at that amazing intro. I feel like I'm having a nerdgasm just watching it, but the game blows. I know the game sucks donkey dong, but look at that opening. It is like God echoing through the hills. It is like a freaking painter is painting my soul onto a canvas of pure imagination. But the I know the game blows. I just look at that opening, though. You don't hear people talking like that. You don't hear people talking like that. Uh, especially for the concept of, it's a game. So, of course, it's going to highlight the main characters. You show me one game that doesn't highlight the main characters. I mean, it's not going to tell you this character, you know, and this is what their name is. It's going to show the characters. Tales of Symphonia did that. And I I'm going to use that as a good example. And I know, um... Uh, I, I know my one fan, Cap uh, Capone Aldrin. Uh, Cap, I know you'll probably say one of the other Tales games definitely would show it off too, but I've only ever played Tales of Symphonia completely to the end, so that's the one I'm going to use for an example. So, with Tales of Symphonia, you saw all the characters. All of the main characters were showed off in that opening to a wonderful background music. Uh, they were going up against enemies. They were having fun. You had Lloyd, Genus, Rain, Colette, Kratos, Sheena. All the all the characters. Every single one. I don't remember all their names off the top of my head. Shoot me. Uh, but you had all those characters. They were all being shown doing their thing. You had like Lloyd taking on his father. Which, by the way, big spoiler. It was Kratos or Kratos or however you want to pronounce it. Um, you had Colette, you know, taking on her duties as the Chosen, but, you know, whatever her thing was. It's been a while since I played it, okay? Uh, you had Sheena being the ninja. She was my favorite in that entire game. It was just an entire, uh, complete, wonderful little thing. It was just so wonderfully done. But that's how you do an opening. It was a great game on top of that. I mean, sure! The entire system of figuring out what's this and that blew crap chunks. The fact that uh, you had to try your damnedest and those stupid grade points were annoying as all hell. But that opening opened the door for a game that if you could look past some of the crappy stuff that you really didn't have to pay that much attention to was a great game. So with an opening, I would hope... That it does show that. So it's showing off uh, the characters, at least the main characters. It's highlighting them, which is what an opening does. Like I said, I would I would be surprised if it didn't show off the, uh, the characters. That would be surprising. Because then that game either is great or it blows ass. And either way, it's not worth my time and effort. I mean, I can name a few games that I've played that had great openings... And the gameplay and the game was just so goddamn atrocious. Um, oh, God, what was that? There's one I played. Um, oh, God, what was it? Uh, was it Ark the Lad? Did I play that? Was that Ark the Lad that I played? I'm trying to remember if that was the one with the... Uh... I'm trying to remember if that... Was it Ark the Lad that I played? I don't know. There was a game I played where it was two different fractions of people. Uh, one was like demons or something... And the other one was humans, and they ended up having to work together at the end. I could never beat it because I couldn't beat that final boss. I figured, screw it, it wasn't worth it, then my PS2 died anyway. I think it was Ark the Lad. I don't know why, that just instantly came to my mind, because then I remember getting the sequel, and I didn't like it. I swear to God it was Ark the Lad, but don't shoot me on it, but I swear to God that's what it was. Uh, but you had that, the opening was good, but it didn't really lead much into the game, because the gameplay sucked ass. Um, cause it was, well, it was a turn-based game anyway, so what do you expect? I mean, strategy turn-based games work only so well. Especially on a console, you're better off with a real-time, not turn-based. It's only turn-based works for some, for certain things. Um, so, God, uh, so many others. I mean, but for, like, every good game, you're gonna have a whole bunch that are gonna have a horrible intro. And it, 
if it has a bad intro, well, the game might be good. Then again, the game could also suck. It's a crapshoot either way. But I just hope that a game is at least showing off what the characters are there for. I mean, they're there for a reason. They're not there just to be pretty and side and sideshow attractions. They're there for a reason. They're there to make you laugh. They're there to make you happy. You're supposed to feel something looking at them like, I can relate to this character as you're playing the game. So I would hope it does that. But anyway, uh, hopefully it comes to the U.S. Uh, maybe by that point in time, if it does come, I'll have finally gotten rich enough to buy a Switch. Uh, maybe I'll finally sink down and give Nintendo money. Maybe I'll actually buy it, a copy, and play it. Who knows? But, I don't know. It was a good game. It was a good series. Uh, but seriously, though, I'd rather have Kill Ballad, please. Uh, that was a lot of fun watching them play that, and I want to play that. Or better yet, can we finally get a custom robo game for the, like, tablets Nintendo? You have that Dragalia Lost, and I tried playing that atrocity uh, this week after downloading the update while watching a movie, and it honestly was stupid. And I uninstalled it. Could we get a custom robo game? I would prefer a custom robo game from you. Please? Pretty please? Maybe? I don't know. Please? Uh, but anyway, uh, if you're looking forward to it, keep an eye out. Maybe it'll show up. Uh, but seriously, though, check out the anime. It's highly worth it. Even just watching clips is worth it. Seriously, it's a great series. All right, so one of my favorite... New anime of the season, Gridman. And this thing has been getting some slack um, for a wrong reason. Uh, I'm just going to say it right off the bat here. So, uh, some fans have been getting themselves a little too happy uh, looking at some of the female characters. Look, I know a lot of people will give Sword Art Online hell because of the whole Kirito Harem thing. He never actually... You know, you know, opened up and confessed feelings. He just made them feel like they were worth something. Okay? He didn't technically do anything wrong. So let's just get off of that train. And while we're at it, let's get off of this train too. Because it kind of annoys me. There is more to this series than just, Oh, look, it's a girl in a swimsuit. Oh, look, she's really pretty. Yeah, she is. Your point is what? I'm watching this for the giant freaking robot. Okay? <coughs> well, anyway, the official website for SSS.Gridman has posted... <laughs> if I had my camera hooked up, you would have saw me doing the little arm thing. It, it would have looked even stupider. Uh, but they have posted guidelines for fans to follow regarding uh, derogative... Derivative works, a rough translation of the guidelines is as follows. On the use of materials, it is prohibited to copy or trace any materials from production, such as images, videos, logos, music, script, music, scripts, and so on. This does not apply to derivative works, illustrations, manga, novels, etc., that are newly created with reference to SSS.Gridman. So, no shit. You can't trace anything. You do realize that there are people that trace things. And I'm going to say, because I've done this myself too, where you trace things to teach your hand the muscle memory to draw it on its own. See, if you trace something enough... You will eventually learn how to draw it. Then you can improve upon it because you will have learned how to draw it via muscle memory. So you'll be able to do it. Then your body will know, hey, I can do this. Now you can look to figure out a way to improve upon it. You know, that does happen. Granted, I mostly just did it out of some how to draw football players and robot books. Mostly just like so a do something in school so my teachers wouldn't give me a hard time for sitting around twiddling my thumbs. Uh, production and distribution of derivative works. And I know I'm mispronouncing this. Or derivative. I know I'm mispronouncing this. I have to do apologize. It's D-E-R-I-V-A-T-I-V-E. Okay? 
Please produce and distribute derivative works in accordance with the guideline above. However, things that infringe on public order or the rights of others are prohibited. And then there's a thing in here about uh, doujinshi, which basically, uh, think of it as hentai manga. That's basically what it is. Uh, any doujinshi, doujinshi, uh, that is deemed to exceed the category of fan activities, such as production and distribution for commercial purposes, may have its sales suspended. Okay, but then it gets worse. Uh, there's more than down here further on. Uh, regarding individual fan works. We cannot respond to inquiries about individual fan works. Please be understanding. Uh, basically, on October 29th, a popular fan artist at Plain Jane Is Plain Jane Ishimo. I do apologize, by the way, if I mispronounced your name, if you are listening. Uh, reported taking down their Gridman fan art from Pixie Vic Fanboy. Uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, the premium version of the art site Pixvic. P-I-X-I-V. Uh, after receiving a notice from the rights holder that they were uploading art for commercial purposes. Did you make any money off of it? Because then it's not commercial purposes then. If you made no money. So basically you got a C and D then. Cease and desist. That's great. That's wonderful. Uh, this inspired speculation from fans that uh, Toshibura uh, Suba, uh, sorry, Suburaya Suburaya Production uh, the original creators of Gridman uh, is taking a harsher stance against derivative works based on their previous actions of copyright enforcement over the Ultraman series. The FAQ on the production on uh, Suburaya's, uh, Suburaya's production's website uh, states that no derivative works based on their IP are permitted without permission. So in other words, if you want to draw Gridman, you have to send them... A letter stating, I'd like to draw a grid man. No. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to draw him anyway. You do, we'll slap you with a C and D. Or if I want to draw Ultraman. No. Well, can I write a fan story about Ultraman? No. Can I do a fan story about Ultraman kicking Godzilla's ass? What part of no don't you understand? It's basically how that conversation would go. Because you can't do it without their permission. And they're not really going to give permission... Because it's their IP. And they're not going to flat out give it because, hey, why should we give permission for this? It's ours. We're the only ones that can do it. You know, kiss our ass. And that's their thing for that. Uh, so the so the SSSS.Gridman Production Co uh, Committee posted their guidelines for fan works a day after announcing that body pillow covers of uh, Rika Takarada and Akane Shinjo are in the works. And yes, for those of you wondering, those are the two characters that they're basing the entire Oh, look, it's a pretty girl concept around. Okay, there you go. Just want to get that out there. That's why. On October 25th, Twitter user at... I'm not even going to try. Uh, A-M-A-M-U-R uh, under space M... Uh, reported that fan-created body pillow covers would not be distributed due to a copyright notice they received. Uh, another C and D. You got a copyright notice. You are screwed. Uh, the official pillow covers of Rika Taka Takarada and Akani Shinjo are currently available for order on Chug Eon Line until November 21st. Akane's parka is also up for sale. The body pillow covers cost 12,960 yen and will ship in mid-December, while the parka costs 9,936 yen and will ship in January of next year. So let's go to my handy-dandy Google search. Oh, Google! Hey, Google, I need you to translate yen to English for me, please. Yen to USD. All right, here we go. Time to do some converting. So we got, how much was it? 12,960. 12, okay, so we got 
12,960 yen. That comes out to... Uh, please tell me that's a freaking joke. Nope, that's... Please, please tell me that's a joke. That's a, that's a, no, that's not a joke. Wow. Okay. So, <clears throat> each of those body pillows is going for $113.85 American. Holy hell! Um, okay. Wow. How much for the, uh... I'm scared now. 9,936. 9,936. Okay, so the parka is going for $87.29. And it better be made from Louis Vuitton. Uh, that is Louis Vuitton prices there. Hell, I am poor, and that's giving my wallet cardiac symptoms. When I saw the body pillow, I suddenly heard it flatline. My wallet is flatlining off of that body pillow. That That's just a cover. I can understand it if you actually got a pillow with it. That is a literal cover. Cover for the pillow. 12,960 in each. Each. And there's two of them. So wait. Oh, oh God. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I just realized something. We got to combine those together. Hold on. Calculator time. Hold on. Uh, let's see here. 12,960 times two. It's 25,920. 25, Holy hell. Uh, okay. I am terrified now to even look this up, but let's go for it one more time. Google, please pull up my yen to USD translator again. All right, let's uh, do this again. Okay. So, and this, by the way, this is as of right now, uh, November 10th at 2.32 a.m. UTC. Disclaimer, uh, one Japanese yen equals 0 0.0088 United States dollars. So, there. Just wanted to get that out there. Uh, now, what is our total here again? We got 25,920. Oh, God, I'm almost afraid here. 25,920. Holy Christmas! $227.71, not counting shipping and handling, is what both of those body pillow covers are going to cost. Not counting shipping. All this to protect the IP of Gridman. First off, love the series, love it. I swear by all that is holy, all five of them had better combine before the end of these 12 episodes, or I'm going to raise some holy hell. But you had 12,960 yen. Oh, more $200. If I want to get both of these, you are out of your mind. And it's just a cover. A cover. I can understand if you had the whole pillow, but just a cover of it. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of money. Holy crow. I mean, God. That's just outrageous. So, besides charging highway robbery prices for this entire thing, which, alright, let's face it, you're gonna have this. Um, let's face it here. You're gonna have this, it's gonna be a massive cost, you know, thing here. But besides charging highway robbery, you're sending out C&D letters, putting up a guideline list for fans that want to do fan art, fan stories, fan fictions... You're basically saying you cannot do anything with our product. With our IP, you can't do squat. Fine. Then why don't you just come right out, right off the bat, when it was coming out saying that no fan art would be allowed. No fan fictions would be allowed. You cannot do anything with our IP. Or you will be sued. Copyright infringements. Copyright notices. And everything else is literally you flexing your muscles. But you're sending cease and desist orders is pretty much following that. They're just not saying, hey, we got a cease and desist. No, I guarantee you, you got a cease and desist on top of the copyright notice. Because on top of the copyright, it's like, this is a notice saying that you have violated our copyright. And underneath it, I guarantee you, was this is an order to cease and desist any further operations. Because they don't want you to do it. And fine. Uh, so, here's the premise, by the way, uh, for those of you that want to check this anime out. 
Uh, Yuta Hibiki, uh, who was a first-year high school student living in the Shushu Judai... Uh, yeah, I don't really know what that is. Uh, one day wakes up to find he has lost his memories, and he meets the hyper-agent Gridman on his old computer. Gridman says that Yuta has a mission he must fulfill, and Yuta sets out to find the meaning to those words with his memory lost. Uh, Yuta's friends show... Uh, Itsumi and Rika Takarada and Akane Shinjo would always help him and spend their days with him. But their tranquil days are suddenly and easily crushed with the appearance of Kaiju. Yeah. That, that's literally it. So on top of all of this happening, because you got uh, Akira Amiyam, Amiya I, I probably mispronounced that too. Um, is directing this collaboration between the anime studio Trigger and uh, Suburaya Productions. Uh, the creator of the Ultraman franchise and the original 1993-94 live-action Tokusatsu special effects series, Denko Chojin Gridman. So you have that. But on top of this, it's also been announced this week that the simul dub is sadly uh, going to be behind a week. Uh, that the English dub will be behind one week uh, due to unknown reasons. And it really didn't go into it when I saw it online. And it really was only like maybe one paragraph. That was it. It just said, not even that. just says that it's going to be uh, off-centered for a week. Didn't really explain why. Just said it's been off-centered for a week on episode five. You know, currently on episode five and nothing else. So it's not really like, hey, we're just going to come right out and tell you this is what's been going on. It's, eh, we're not going to tell you. Uh, probably, you know, an event or something, or they got burned out, or holidays, or whatever it is. I don't know. But I like the dub. Uh, I'm really sad that I gotta wait now a week. I'm gonna be a week behind on it, but the dub was really good. But I'll watch it subbed. It's not gonna kill me. I just really want to see them combine all together. I mean, seriously? You have... You, you tried it. You teased it. You blue-balled us with it back in episode... What, what was that? Four? No. Three? No. Or was that four that you... No, that was four. That was episode four you blue-balled us with that. Yeah, that was episode four you blue-balled us with the, hey, we're going to all combine together. All right, let's do this. And it froze because it, the piece of junk couldn't handle all five of them at once. It's like, no. No. You don't blue-ball us like this. No. But I swear, though, by the light of all that is holy, you had better all combine before the end of these 12 episodes or I'll raise some hell on top of all the other fans because I want to see you all combine I know it's capable I know you're capable of doing it there's got to be a way for you to combine I want to see it damn it plus there should be one more of you because we're kind of missing Drago but uh I'll get into that some other point down the road but anyway Honestly, sending out cease and desist letters to me seems like a sort of a dick move because it's like, hey, you know, we want our property to stay ours. I get that. You want it to basically not be trampled on and screwed with. I get that too. But crushing the creativity of fans, you're going to have fans that are going to take it one step too far. You're going to have fans that are going to make a fan fiction. Every fan has done it since the dawn of time. There have been fan fictions for Dragon Ball Z. There have been fan fictions for Yu Yu Hakusho. There have been fan fictions for Iken, for Robotics Notes, for uh, Death Note, uh, Food Wars. You name it, there have been thousands of fan fictions. In fact, if you look up anime fan fictions on a Google search, you'll be surprised how many search results you get and how many sites have them. I am not joking. Yes, some of them do get creepy. Yes, some of them are completely off the wall. But here's the thing. They all come from a wonderful place. It's called a mind, an imagination. Sure, some people go a little crazy and some people have an imagination like a stuffed pig. But still, it's just an imagination. The fact that you are literally telling people 
You cannot have an imagination with our product unless you follow these specific guidelines. You're literally taking it that they can't create something utilizing their own talents and your character in a way that, you know, is a fan-made prodigy. You're basically saying that they can't do this. So this would include, um, at least based off of what they've said here, it would include... Uh, any abridged series, so there goes like anybody ever getting a chance to abridge that, because they will C and D your ass so fast on that now with this. Uh, you got that. You have uh, games like fan made games, uh, fan made comics. Anything is now off the went off the door with this. But it goes. This does not apply to illustrations, manga, novels, etc. But what does the etc. count as? And then what's not to say that they're going to go down the road and say, nope, can't do this, it's our property. Nope, can't do this, it's our property. Nope, can't do this, it's our property. So you have a bridging series would be out because it would be images, videos, logos, etc. But illustrations would also uh, fall into that because they're images too. Because even though you're drawing it, you're drawing their image. So there is a fine line here between what they can get you with and what they're claiming they can't where they secretly can so it's it's really a stupid thing. It bothers the hell out of me. I'm not going to deny that. But all in all, there's really nothing you can do. Because they know they, they can win. They have it, you know, that they can win. They know that there's nothing you can do to stop them. And it's sad. But either way, uh, Gridman's a great series. I like it. Uh, but this is a dick move. I'm not going to deny that. This is a dick move. Even by my standards, this is a dick move, and you know it. I understand why you're doing it, but I'm just telling you, it's a dick move. Plain and simple, it's a dick move. So hot off the heels of Netflix and everything else, you know that this was coming. Disney wants to make their own branded streaming service. Because, you know, they have their own TV channel. They have their own theme parks. They have an entire amalgam of lawyers that can scare the crap out of Cartoon Network and make Fox wet its pants, but they want more. Yes, they want more. They want their own streaming service, and it's set to launch late next year, and the name that they have chosen. Can I get a drum roll, please? Sorry about that, but this is the only drum roll I could do that you would hear. The name is Disney Plus. Really thought out of the box and pressed right up against it on that one, didn't you, Disney? Wow, that must have been one great conversation for how to come up with that. That must have been a six-day ball buster. We got to make 80 pots of coffee, bring in some fried chicken, get us some pizza. We are going to be here until we come up with a name. 88 hours later, have we come up with a name yet? No. Four days total. Why don't we call ourselves Disney Plus? All in favor of Disney Plus so we can get the hell out of here and go back home to our families. Disney Plus it is. Let's get out of here. I got a shower. I'm starting to grow mold under my armpits. <laughs> I mean, it's just... Seriously. I mean, that is just... It, oh, God. Uh, but Disney chairman and CEO Bob uh, Eager uh, revealed the moniker with a, fresh, with a few fresh details about plans for Disney Plus, as well as the fate of Hulu and its version and its version for Disney's enlarged television operation during a conference call to, uh, Thursday afternoon to the Wall Street analyst. The media giant, which is awaiting the completion of its $71.3 billion acquisition of key 21st Century Fox assets, <coughs> X-Men, <coughs> Fantastic Four, all the other crap. I'm sorry, I, I had to, sorry, I have some bad allergies lately. Uh, reported strong fiscal fourth quarter earnings. Uh, Elger, I, I mispronounced, I don't know if, how I'm pronouncing this right or not, but I'm guessing Eager, uh, said the company is on track to launch Disney Plus in late 2019. Uh, let's see here. 
Uh, the company will host an investor presentation in April to offer more details and a first look at the service. On Thursday, Disney also launched a placeholder website to collect email addresses for prospective subscribers, you know, because they fear that nobody's going to, uh, well, what's the word I'm looking for here? Oh, yes, buy into this crap. Uh, the Disney Plus branding is keeping with the format established by ESPN Plus service that bode earnings la that bode earnings this year. Uh, Edgar said ESPN Plus has more than 1 million subscribers so far. The growth of ESPN's foray into the streaming world bodes very well for Disney overall for Disney's overall global streaming strategy. Uh, see here at the same time, the launch of ESPN Plus requires significant investments in Disney's CFO. Christine McCarthy told uh, analysis that the investment in ESPN streaming offshoot will have an adverse impact on operating income about $100 million for the first quarter. So in other words, you're launching this because you believe that because you have your foot so firmly in television's ass that you can do this. That's fine. I'm, I'm not going to argue with you. Nickelodeon does that, but you don't see them coming out with their own streaming service. Hell, I don't even see Cartoon Network coming out with their own streaming service, and they pretty much have had a foothold in television since 1992. Yes! 92! Uh, so Disney Plus is going to focus on content rooted in the company's most formidable brands. Uh, Disney... Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and National Geographic, the latter of which will join Disney will join the Disney fold through its pending acquisition of 21st Century Fox. One of us. One of us. I just see Marvel, Pixar, Disney, and Star Wars all standing around in a hallway as National Geographic's walking down going, Where am I? One of us. One of us. One of us. Oh, God, no! One of us. Uh, the service is going to offer subscribers unprecedented access to Disney's library of films and TV fare. Yeah, right. Uh, Disney Productions arms are revving up production of original content to stock up Disney+, Plus, including a new Rogue One-related series, top-lined by Diego Luna, and, doco -seri and a docu-series that he described as an unprecedented look at the inner workings of Walt Disney Imagineering. Oh, we're going to see how the magic elves make all the fun, creepy robotics in Disneyland. Yay! Don't forget the fact that you're going to be fighting Netflix to get your hands on uh, their Marvel properties that they're ditching to the wayside, like Iron Fist and Luke Cage. Uh, they're probably going to be ditching Daredevil by the time you guys launch this piece of crap. And Jessica Jones probably too, so you can get the rights to air all of those. And you'll fight Netflix to tooth and bone on that. Tooth and nail to the death. Uh, Edgar also briefly addressed Disney's plans for Hulu. The streaming service that would be it will be 60% controlled by Disney after the Fox acquisition is complete. Oh my god, poor Hulu. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, I mean, oh my god, poor Hulu. Uh, Hulu will remain focused on general entertainment fare, while Disney Plus is a laser focused on family-friendly material. Yep, just gonna get that super-powered laser here with the Mickey Mouse ears as the targeting device. Just gonna point that right at your family. No, no, don't worry. It's gonna make y'all feel all happy and warm inside. Not to mention, it's probably gonna melt your uh, brains and turn them into cotton candy. But don't worry about it. It's gonna be fine. I'm gonna turn on the family-friendly beam. What, what do you mean? The lead shield here? Oh, that that's just to protect me. See, I have been overrun with so much Disney joy that if I have too much more of it, I'm liable to explode. This will protect me from the Disney joy. Let me flip the switch now. <laughs> it's, it's, it actually say it's a lasers are focused on family-friendly material. It's, I don't even want to... The <laughs> laser focused. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, we're going to focus the laser. All right. All right, power up the beam. We're liable to need another, ti another Timmy after this, but power up the beam. We'll see if we can pump some Disney magic into this boy. Come on, everybody. Full power to the Disney power. Family-friendly go beam. Make him happy. Fire! <laughs> Crap. Do we have another Timmy? 
the, the family friendly baby took up too much Disney. Um, Edgar was pressed though about, uh, like I said, the role of uh, Hulu's other shareholders, Comcast and AT and T. Basically, he probably just gonna give them uh, the middle finger. Uh, but he made no mention of whether Disney will look to buy out the remaining 40% of Hulu. Yeah, bullshit. You're going to probably buy them out, look at AT&T, Comcast, and go, Look, we owe 60% of your sorry ass. We own Hulu. It's ours now. You want to stay? You either back up with us, or we just basically buy your asses out. Take your pick. Either way, we control you on this end. The two of you combined can't do squat. First rule of business, boys and girls, is if you own 51% of the company, you own the company. Because nobody can beat you at 49%. So the higher up your percentage goes, the lower their percentage goes, and the less they have to fight with. And I learned that from Yu-Gi-Oh, folks. Uh, Edgar said Disney executives intend to meet with the other shareholders after the Fox deal is completed to discuss the long-term plan. Uh, for investing in Hulu. Anything we do with Hulu will be done with an eye towards being fiscally responsible to the other shareholders, even though they are minority you know they are a minority shareholder. Okay? They may be a minority, but they still own shares in your ass now. Uh Edgar was pressed by uh, analysis on our analysts on how Disney will balance investments in the new streaming service with its traditional endeavors in content production and distribution via linear platforms such as ABC, Disney Channel, and Freeform. Don't forget, uh, don't they own, uh, what is that one? Uh, they st- do they still own Disney XD? Is that finally, are they not, or do they no longer own that? Or did that go belly up? Because I saw that they own that too. Don't tell me they lost that. Is that just a subsidiary of Disney now? Uh, he cited the strength of the assets that Disney is acquiring from Fox, as well as the new management team that will oversee the a large group of networks and studios, namely Fox's Peter Rice, uh, Dana Walden, and John Lit- Landgraf. If we create the television studio we aim to create, we're going to have an engine at the company coming from different entities. We'll be able to supply Hulu with lots of high-quality content, more than they currently have. The new regime will create a television business designed to service and service the present as well as the future of combined entity. What does that even mean? I mean, I, I could, you know, fact our wonderful guest here is that you're basically talking out your ass, but I wouldn't know. But what does that even mean? Uh, but for all the emphasis on Disney's deep dive into streaming as it looks to take on Netflix and other global content marketplace, Edgar made it clear that Disney is not abandoning its established linear focus plus or its linear focus TV operations. Well, no, because you still owe all the people at 6ABC who say 6ABC, uh, uh, Disney is the parent company of 6ABC. You owe them all a dollar every time they say that, don't you? Uh, we don't intend to get out of those businesses or deprioritize them or sacrifice them. We also, uh, we're also realists. We see what's going on in the marketplace. We see the growth of new platforms and program consumptions versus channel consumption. Really? Uh, Edgar stressed that it's too early to tell how much the focus of its TV efforts will shift in the near term. You're right. Uh, see opportunities growing more and more programming over direct consumer platforms. They'll do that. Uh, they can't right now estimate any way that this will happen. They're going to be nimble. Uh, they've already um, evidenced by just some of the fact that they are going to direct consumer as aggressively as they were going into it. Yeah, whatever. Basically, uh, the takeaway from this is that Disney's creating their own streaming service. They're calling it Disney Plus. It's basically going to be filled with all of their stuff. Think of it like Netflix, but it's only Disney related content you're going to get. And truthfully, while I have no issue with that, um, take a good look at your name and all I have to say is this is you're saying that you're basing this off of ESPN Plus, which ESPN had their foot 
firmly up the ass of sports watchers when they did the plus thing. And they did that to add more sports than what they normally had. But here's the thing. With you doing this on an online sort of deal, there's one competitor and one group online you did not think about. Because there is something that everybody that has a YouTube account was forced to get. And that unfortunately may be going away, but it's not dead in the water yet. And that is Google+. Plus. So, uh, just have to wonder for a minute, who came up with the Plus idea first? And if it was Google and not ESPN, Disney can expect a massive lawsuit. But keep in mind, uh, they're also calling, they're also going to be competing with uh, the DC streaming service that uh, Warner Brothers is limping to the barn with. They're $74.99. Oh, God, I can't remember. $74.99 for that piece of shit. That's that's highway robbery. But you have that. So, of course, they want to create their own. And with Netflix canceling uh, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, they're probably going to ditch Daredevil and all the other Marvel shows once the contracts are up so they can push their own uh, original series. It's not unheard of that Disney will pick them up with them being Marvel licenses. And they'll go, look, we got Marvel properties. They'll have the Marvel movies. They'll probably have anything Marvel-related any Star Wars thing related, all their Disney Channel stuff, ad infinito down the list. My guess for how much this entire shit show is going to cost is somewhere in the realm of like 100 bucks a month. I'll be surprised if it's cheaper than that. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll be a little more generous. Maybe about 110 a year. Uh, it'll be amazing, though, if it's less than that. But honestly, I mean... I, I get what Disney's doing. I understand it. But from a standpoint, we have too many streaming sites as it is. We got Netflix. We have Hulu. We have um, Crunchyroll. We got Verve. We got uh, HBO Go. Stars. How many more streaming services <coughs> do we need? I mean, there's so many of them out there right now. We have so many of them that I can name. Google searching them is a complete... You're going to get an entire list. There's so many of them. And you're just adding one more into the mix because you want to compete with them because you know the TV's a dying market because cable companies are expensive as all hell. Nobody really has them except for the internet because they have faster internet than phone companies, which I'm amazed... Phone companies haven't gotten off their bus to fix that problem yet. But seriously, you're only doing this to compete with what you know you can't beat. And then at the same time, it's, well, we know what we're doing, but you don't seem to know what you're doing. If that makes any sense. Uh, you're putting all your eggs in a basket. You're trying to split up those, those eggs then into different baskets because you know, okay... Uh, after we get this taken care of, we're going to have a massive influx of cash, provided you don't lose your ass in something else. And keep in mind that while everything works out smoothly on paper, not everything works out when you put it into practice. Something that looks good on paper won't work out well when it's put into practice. So there is that. But anyway, welcome to the party, Disney. You're about what? Five years late to the party, but at least you're here now. Uh, so, good luck taking on Netflix. They're going to sue you, or at least try to pull a copyright thing for their stuff, because right when you make the comment, well, we got our streaming service up, we want Luke Cage, Iron Fist, we want their stuff, give us the contracts. No, 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 Netflix will go. This is our stuff, they're our original content. Yes, but they're Marvel, we own Marvel, give them to us. No, 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 they're ours, back off. We have more powerful lawyers than you. Back off. We have entire amounts of lawyers. We have a Hulk. So what? We got a Daredevil. We got a Jessica Jones. We have a Death Note. Get your point. We have a Hulk. And that's what the... It's just going to be a back and forth with them just to get the properties from Marvel that Netflix has. Because Netflix was getting rid of them. Then you're going to have any other streaming site that had stuff. So like um, Hulu, Crunchyroll, um, 
God, there's a, just a couple other ones that their names keep escaping me. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to block anything now on YouTube, like any clips or anything. No, 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 this is now Disney-related. You can't have it because they want it all on their streaming site. So I wouldn't be surprised. But you never know uh, until it'll happen what's going to happen until it happens. But anyway, welcome to the streaming service, Disney. Don't screw anybody over because, uh, who am I kidding? You're Disney. You're going to do that anyway. Alrighty, folks, that's going to do it this week for the absolutely, completely random podcast. I am tired, and i got to get up at 2.30 in the morning and go to work. So, from me, Andrew Rhodes, to you, thank you for listening and being here for the last, I want to say, hour, a little over. And don't forget, if you have any topics you'd like me to talk about, feel free to shoot them to me on the podcast email, here on my YouTube channel, or on my Twitter page or the official Facebook page. By the way, the podcast email is is acrpodcast at gmail.com. I do check that once a week. No, I don't check it more than that because I don't access it via my tablet. I only access it via my laptop or desktop. So please, you know, check that out if you get a chance to. Let me know what you think. Send me, you know, like, just let me know what you think. Say hi if you want a shout-out or something. Let me know. If you have any topic ideas, feel free to drop them here. Let me know. And until next week, hopefully it will be back on Saturday. Doubt it highly, but hopefully it will be. I'm Andrew Rhodes, and this has been the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. Good night, everybody. And as Casey Kasem used to say, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. Bye, everybody, and have a great week.